Ken, it's nice to visit with you today, and uh, we'd like to find out about uh, your history and your experience here in Thomas and different places that were here that you can remember and things that you did. <music> mentioned that uh, you were actually born in St. George. What grade were you in when you came here? I imagine around the fifth grade or sixth grade. Okay. All right. Okay. And it, who all came? My mother and father and I had uh, two brothers. Okay. And I had three sisters. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay, so there were six of you mm -hmm. in your family. Yeah. Okay. And where did you first live when you came to Thomas? We lived on Bunker Hill. Okay. There on the top. Okay. Did you say your dad was a miner? Yeah, he worked in the mines. So he worked for Davis Coal and Coke? Yeah. Which mine did he work in? There in town, I think, here in town, down down on front street down there okay you work down there uh, okay so that was the one in back of the esso station yeah. or okay what things would you buy at the b and l just what you needed you know like for food or something like that did your mo mother stay at home while yeah, your yeah. dad worked in the mines yeah she went to work she okay. worked at home with the kids Okay, and uh, how many, do you know how many years your dad worked in the mines? No. Okay. <clears throat> Did he work there until retirement? No. My father traveled around. He didn't, he didn't stay in the mine place very long. Okay. He was one of those that wanders. Okay. So what did he go to different mines or? Well, he worked in the woods, you know, and logging stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it was all a lot of hard work that he did yeah. then. Yeah, it wasn't easy. So. Yeah. My whole life wasn't very easy. So, <laughs> you know, yeah. it just it was a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. And um, now I guess you could, since the mines didn't start closing up until 1950, I guess you can remember when all the deep mines were still open. We had nine mines between Thomas and Douglas. So did people mostly walk to work or did some of them drive to work? I I remember people going to work. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. So, I imagine the ones that like in Pierce and Kempton, those places, they probably walked if they lived there. Uh huh. They would just walk to work. Yeah. Imagine. Okay. What was the town like uh, when you were young and came here? Oh, it was a booming town. A lot of people. A lot of you know. Nice theater. It was, it was just a nice, nice place. So even when you were young, it had already been sold. The building had, which was the Cottrell House originally. Yeah. Uh, so you remember after it had been sold to the Sutton family mm -hmm. for the movie theater. Yep. Okay. It was really nice. Beautiful. Was the bar still in there from when Cottrell still had it? No, I don't remember a bar in there. Okay. So. Because Mr. Cottrell had a saloon oh, down it? on one side oh, okay. uh, when he still had it. Oh. And so I guess after Mr. Sutton bought it, then it he better. changed it. Yeah. yeah. So... Uh, uh, was the theater usually packed back then? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, people didn't have anything to do, so they did the movies. 
Uh -huh. It's a beautiful theater. Uh huh. It's really, you know, I remember the carpeted stairway all the way up, and it was really beautiful. Uh huh. So, Do you remember any of the movies you saw there, or no. what they cost? I don't remember that now. Okay. Do you remember when um, Ben Hur and um, Gone with the Wind played there? I saw a movie, but I don't remember what I saw. You know, that's, uh huh. Because yeah. I can remember uh, when those were there, and uh, you know, this line was clear down yeah. the street with people waiting to get a ticket to get in. And, and I remember everybody would uh, go downtown and park and watch everybody, you know, go in and <laughs> out of the theater and the varsity and those places, you know. So. Uh huh. No, that was a big thing to do. Uh huh. They couldn't get in the movie, so they said much to other people. Uh huh. So, do you remember what other stores or businesses were in town then? Yeah, Ruby Rubenstein store. Now, was it in I, the building that they owned where the Flying Pig was, or? Had they moved into the Shalansky building by that they were time? In the Shalansky building. Okay. No. And Shalansky was on one side and Rubenstein. Molly, yeah, and Rubenstein's on the other. And then Mike Ferruso's. What all did Mike Ferruso sell in his store? Mostly everything, I guess, you know. Mostly meats. Uh huh. Thing too. And Ruby's did too. Uh huh. No, so. Were those were Rubenstein's and Ferruso's both mainly butcher shops, or did they sell a variety? I think they were mostly butcher shops. Okay. You know, so. Because um, uh, Rubenstein's had a farm down Sugarlands. Okay. And they raised cattle and stuff down there. Uh huh. And they butchered them down there and they'd bring them back up to Thomas. Okay. Were there any Jewish people here besides the Rubensteins and Shalanskys that you remember? I don't. Th I don't think so. So the there others had been, left. There may have been some. I don't know. But probably did, before your were. time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you remember any of the old timers who were from different countries? Right off. Okay, because I can remember uh, Gentonio's lived across the street from us up here at the top of Brown Street. Mrs. Uh, they were from, she. he was from Italy. I can't remember if she was or not, but he still spoke uh, broken English. And then um, there was... Uh, Mrs. Malakwish, two doors up from us, she was from Austria, and she was a hard worker. Her whole backyard was a garden, and back then, she leased uh, a bunch of property up, up here by the Catholic Cemetery from the railway, and she had a big uh, garden up there. Do you remember the war years from World War II when uh, a lot of the soldiers would go there? I can remember World War II because we lived up in Smoky Hall at that time. Okay. And, uh, down at Parsons. Yeah, down at okay. Parsons. And uh, you, went, you couldn't have a light on because it would be, you know, uh, like sirens and stuff, you know, to get everything black and they couldn't have lights or anything i remember that and i remember one time we had a light in there and we didn't have the blinds pulled or something uh-huh and they come and knock on your door is you that know? right yeah so yeah now were they the same soldiers that trained up at uh, seneca rocks uh before they went overseas i don't know maybe they were you know, so, because I was a kid then, you know, I was a, 
Uh -huh. I don't know how old I was. So. Okay. Yeah. I can remember um, Ernie Nags. You know, he taught junior high yeah. English or uh, science. science. And I can remember him living down yeah. there. And remember how he had the brace yeah. and the limp from where he had infantile yeah. paralysis. Yeah. So. I can remember him standing up against the wall and see if your posture was right. <laughs> he had to do that with girls. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that awful? Um, do you remember uh, Jack Recco's bar oh, yeah. in, um, who was in the tobacco uh, building uh, at that time? I know when I was young, Kaufman's department store moved in that building. Who was in there before then? Would have still been the Tobacco Brothers? Well, they had a store there, too, didn't they? And they're right next to the bar, so they... Right. On the left-hand side toward the... Right. Side. That no, was the had... hardware store, right? No, they had... The hardware was over on the right. Okay. And, uh, and what was on that. the left? That's where they had a grocery store in there. Okay. Salvatore the Tobacco. So that was his first grocery store was in that building. I think so. All right, they split up later on. Did Jim Cooper own his store by the bank when he you moved here? I think he owned it. Okay. Yeah. Because, you know, that was the O'Connor building yeah. originally. He was from Ireland. Oh, really? Yeah. And I guess he ended up leaving town, and that's when Jim yeah. Cooper bought it. He had it quite a few years, you know. Yeah. And the post office was yeah. in that building. Yeah, right. Yeah. So later on, where uh, Renee Tobacco made her office as president, I can remember when that <laughs> space was the um, post office. And um, Marie Younger was the postmistress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and it was just uh, probably it was as wide as this space right yeah, it here, wasn't, very, wasn't it? It wasn't very wide, no. Yeah. A little near our place. And you still had the mailboxes that had yeah. the combination. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. it's a shame they didn't save some of those. Yeah. I wonder what they did with those. Uh, you know, down the current post office, they have some from the Douglas oh, post office. Oh. Yeah, the next time you're down there, go in and check oh, that out. Yeah, those yeah. are, they have on there. that They might even call it by its um, new name, which was Albert. Yeah. Were the passenger trains still running? Oh, yeah. Did you ride the train? May have rode to Parsons one time. Oh, really? That's all? You yeah. didn't ride it on a regular basis? No. Oh, you know, when um, Mother uh, was expecting my sister Pauletta, that's how she would go to uh, Dr. Leonfeld doctor. down at Parsons. Yeah. She rode the train. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people rode the train, yeah. So. yeah. Remember that old black stuff coming out of y Yes. Landing. <laughs> From the old things. steam oh, engines. Oh, my gosh, yeah. So. Yeah. And was there a lot of traffic on the tracks that you remember? No, no, not that I remember. Okay. Because I, so. I noticed um, one time when I was down there walking that um, apparently there were six tracks uh, at one time. There was quite a few, I know. You know, trains came in from everywhere. Uh-huh. Yeah. Do you know where all people could go once they... Uh, 
uh, rode the train here in town. I know they could go to Parsons. Where else could they go on the train? I don't know. Okay, so you don't know I if they could go to Oakland and Elkins? And... Cumberland, maybe. I don't know. Okay. Did you ever uh, uh, buy any of the goodies at um, uh, the Roma or... Um, Nick DeMeo's. Nick DeMeo's, yes. Yeah. What did you get peanuts, there? Peanuts. <laughs> Probably peanuts. Is that where the peanut roaster and the varsity came from? I don't know. Might have been. Remember all Do you the remember that? And he always had a window full of peanuts. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. Smells so good. Uh huh. Yeah. Did you get uh, his ice cream? Yeah, we used to sit on the bar stools and have a little ice cream. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Do you remember the drugstore? Yeah. Okay. John Pace, what was his name? John Pace. Pace. Really? He he had it when you remember? Yeah, he worked in there. Yeah. Okay, did you remember the guy who built it, Dr. Hoffman? I didn't know him now. He was gone by the time you came. But then there was a Dr. Curry. Yes, I didn't Curry. know him. I knew his wife. Yeah. So was Doc Curry actually a pharmacist and not a medical doctor? He might have been just a pharmacist. I'm not sure. Uh huh. You know. Okay. And Mrs. Curry was a teacher. Yeah. Did you have her in no. school? Who were some of the teachers you had? I didn't go. I didn't finish school. But during the time that you did? Slade Rubenstein. Oh, really? Okay. He was um, a math teacher. Okay. Mary Bennett. Okay. Mr. Maggs. Now, uh, Miss Bennett taught um, home ec. Yeah. So you had her for that? Okay, mm -hmm. and then did you have Mr. Nags for science? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, was Sally Watson there then? Oh, yes. Okay, yeah. and she, librarian. she was always the librarian? Mm -hmm, as far as I know. So she didn't teach any classes, just library? I don't know, I don't know. Okay, you know, she and uh, Dad's sister, Ethel, were good friends. Mm -hmm. They taught together. I remember Ethel. And, um, uh, you know, she and uh, Vicki Murhar would come mm -hmm. to our house to visit. And, uh, uh, you know, Miss Murhar had a sort of an odd personality, but she was really a nice person. Yeah. And... Um, uh, I remembered them both real well. What schools did you go to here? The Thomas School? Thomas School, yeah. Okay. And that, was it all 12 grades when you went there? I think so, yeah. Okay. Were there any particular teachers that you liked especially or who left? Uh, an impression with you that you still remember? No, I like I like everybody anyway. So. Say what? I like everybody anyway. So uh huh. I probably like them. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Um, did you ever have Bessie Marie for a teacher? No. Okay. No. When I had her, um, uh. You know, the, uh, she was a milkant, and uh, her dad had one of the stores up on Spruce Street. John. Uh-huh. And um, they were from Lithuania, mm -hmm. and uh, she would teach us uh, songs in Lithuanian oh, when we were in school. Uh-huh. Yeah. They said she was a good teacher. She was. She was. I liked her. 
I can remember even when I was little how people sort of looked out for each other oh, yeah. back in the old days. And, um, you know, if the children were doing something they weren't supposed to, it the got neighbor, home before they did. The and, neighbors took care of it. <laughs> and uh, uh, if there was a death in the family, all the neighbors would uh, bring a, uh, a cover dish of some sort to the family to help out with all the company they would get during uh, the bereavement. And, uh, People are good. They've always been good. Yeah, and always knew each other. Yeah. And, they still do. Yeah. I can remember we would go to Clarksburg and Elkins for the day to shop on weekends and the back door would be wide open. Yeah. You didn't think a thing of it back no. then. So you I knew didn't have to keep them locked. Yeah. 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 So times have changed. Oh yeah. Now you don't know your next door neighbor keep and the change. Yeah. Over the years who were some of your uh, neighbors or good friends? I've always had good neighbors. I still do. Okay. My pl my driveway needs plowed. Uh, uh, Dave up here will come down and plow it, or uh, or my grandson does too. Uh huh. And uh, uh, Carrie Nelson. Okay. They'll come over and plow it, you know. I've always had good neighbors, you know. You're still witnessing some sense of community then oh, yeah. and neighbors helping neighbors. Oh, they do. Yeah. Mira Cooper seemed to be yeah. a big name in town. She had a restaurant. Okay, now I read where she managed the restaurant in the Metropolitan Hotel. Is that the restaurant that she ended up taking over, or was her restaurant somewhere else? She had one uh, up, what's it, you know, um, you know, there was a liquor store in town, too. Right, in, Ch in, in store, the Shalansky's the Dress where, Shop building. Where, uh, That's where her restaurant was? Where Jack Gretko had his restaurant? Yes. That was Muir's. Okay, so uh, it was in was Jack there. Rico's yeah. building. Yeah. Okay. What type of food did she serve? Um, uh, like burgers and soups and stuff like that. Uh, so. Kind of like short order yeah, things? Did, yeah. Okay. Okay. Did you frequent the Roma restaurant? Oh, yes. Okay. A nice dance floor upstairs. Okay. The Midnighters played. Remember the Midnighters? No, I don't. I remember oh. the polka dots, but not the Midnighters. They were great. What yeah. kind of music did they play? The kind I like. The big band music? <laughs> yeah, big band. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they did. They were wonderful, yeah. Okay. All right. Yep. Was that how, is that where you got to know Dot, Dorothy Losh? No, I didn't know Dorothy until, well, I've known her for years, but really got to know her from church. Okay. Church. Okay. You got, you and your family go to the Presbyterian Church, right? Yeah, my right? mother-in-law used to play the piano at church. Oh, really? Dorothy. Okay. Yeah, Dorothy came like Oh, okay. I didn't years. know that. I knew uh, Dad's sister-in-law, Aunt Ruth, played. But I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, uh, played for a long time. Yeah. Okay. Remember the they had a little thing upstairs at the. Building. I sure do the choir loft. Yeah, yeah. that was a nice building. Yeah. And yeah, she played uh, years. Okay. You know. Okay. She always wanted Fort to play, uh, take lessons. You know, uh huh. Stubborn wouldn't do it. Is that right? <laughs> he was stubborn. He wouldn't do it. No. Okay. But he'd let's sit down and play by ear. Uh-huh. You know, so that was a long time ago. So was I to... always liked her. <laughs> she was a nice person. Yeah, she, was. she loved to entertain. She still 
Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, she was. She's a go-getter. Yeah. <laughs> she raised yeah. all those kids by herself. Yeah. Know, after her husband. Died. And I guess that was typical. You know, there was a lot of population here, yeah. but I, I guess as a whole, life was difficult. Uh, for people. In, she took in washings, you know, clothing to wash and uh -huh. irons and uh -huh. did that to help. And okay. then the boys, when they went away, Johnny and Pork and them, then they'd help her out, you know. Okay. They worked away. Okay. In Cleveland, so. And those were her sons. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. What type of people uh, frequented the restaurants downtown? Did they each have their own type of clientele, or did different groups of people go there to I think the it was different just ones? Different groups, you know. Okay. Just wander in and sit and have a burger and have a beer. <laughs> uh huh. So, okay. Yeah, so. Okay. Yeah, I can remember going to DiPolo's store yeah. when I was little. And you remember how back in the back, next to the back counter, there was that um, pot belly stove? Yeah. And all the old timers yeah. would sit around that pop belly stove tell and stories. have a beer and tell stories. Tell stories. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that was always yeah, enjoyable. Was always, uh... Busy place. Uh huh. Those guys, you know. So. Yeah. And then I remember going in, even when I got old enough, going into Buckshot Fair's place. Yeah. I remember it after Stewart yeah. had taken it over. <clears throat> and, uh, um, you know, Aunt Burl and Uncle Dwayne lived in one of the apartments up over Buckshot's place. Oh, really? And their apartment had steps down to the sportsman's club. Oh. And, you know, uh, Stewart uh, sold uh, liquor by the drink before it was uh, legal. Oh. And uh, every time there was going to be a raid, someone would tip Stewart off. <laughs> And he'd get the patrons together, and they would um, haul all the whiskey up to Aunt Burl's apartment and hide it so they wouldn't get caught. And uh, even when Aunt Burl got old, I can, they would have moved to Cleveland after the mine shut down, and both of them went to work for uh, GM up at Cleveland. But they would come in to visit, and she'd always tell that, tell story, that story and laugh about it. Okay. So, and that room to the left side, do you remember the old guys going in there to play poker? Uh, poker and pool. That, yeah, they used to play yeah. a lot down there. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so there was a lot of activity down at town. <laughs> they were busy. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. Would you go downtown and listen to uh, Patsy Santangelo play his trumpet from uh, his balcony or up at the bandstand? We just uh, stayed around the house. Uh huh. You know, we didn't do anything. Okay. So the girls didn't get together and no. and swim or anything no. like that. Mm -hmm. Telling you, my life wasn't very interesting. <laughs> I guess when your first marriage ended, then you ended up raising your children on your own for a while. Yeah. When did you and Don get married? Sixty-six. Okay. Yeah, I worked at Blackwater for about ten years. Okay. Yeah, so. Okay. Made forty cents an hour. Really? That's what we made, yeah. And that was minimum wage at that time? I guess so. That's what we got. We got a penny raise one time, so made 41 cents an hour. Tried to raise a couple kids on that. Yeah. 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 
Okay, now I remember when you lived up over the bowling alley, mm -hmm. and you were by yourself and your children at that time, yeah. right? What children did you have when you were living over the bowling alley on Spruce, or the skating rink over um, Spruce Rick Street? Betsy. Rick and Betsy. Okay. That's right. Okay. I've lost them back. And I guess um, uh, that was one of the tragic parts of your life. You you lost your son Vic in Vietnam. Yep. And what year was that? He, uh, 1967, he died. He was over there two months. So he was about like mother's half-brother then. Yeah. He didn't last long. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, uh, while he was over there, he met, uh, you remember Francis Massey? You remember Red Massey? Yes. Francis, her son? Yes. And she met him over there. So you and Don got married the same year you lost Vic? Uh, we got married in 1966. And we, the year before? Yeah. Okay. He was going to Fairmont State. What was it like raising your children in Thomas? <laughs> Kind of rough. <laughs> was it? Yeah, it was. It was. They were good kids. Uh huh. Know, so, yeah. Did you think it uh, was the type of town where uh, you felt you could let them run off for the day and not worry about yeah. them? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. That everybody'd look out for them. You know, yeah. There's always some you know. Yeah. Do you remember the tornado in 1947? It took part of the Ellick's restaurant, I think, the top off of the Ellick's restaurant at that time. Is that right? Yeah, it was called the tap room, remember, or the bloody, right. bucket, or the bloody bucket. I bloody remember bucket. the tap room. Yeah, okay. and then it was called the bloody bucket. Okay. So people just drink and fight. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, shoot. Oh, well, there were some good ones around here. Remember Del Signor's fighting down on Front Street? Oh, well, I'll they tell were you. They always fighting. The winter, winter's isn't anything like we used to have. We used to have drifts as high as this house, you know. Remember the cutters they used to go up to, Canaan cutting the road over? Yeah. yeah. Bad. The drifts would be as high as oh, this yeah. room where they'd go yeah. through, wouldn't it? Yeah. But it's, it's mild anymore. Last year, we didn't have very much. Remember downtown, all the buildings had coal chutes yeah. where uh, they would have the they metal have lid, yeah. even with the sidewalk, and yeah. when they'd get coal uh, for the season, they would put, put it down those right. chutes on the sidewalk. So every, everybody heated with coal, and that was yeah, a warm did. heat, wasn't yeah, it? It was. Dirty heat. It was so dirty. Yeah. Yeah. But you when know, when we first moved here, we used coal. I right. The furnace and it. We uh, diverted it to electric. Yeah. Know? When we and bought our house, it yeah. it had a coal furnace. Yeah. And uh, you know that was a three story house. Still is a three story house, and that furnace would heat that whole house. Mm -hmm. so. In fact, it would get some warm sometimes. You'd have to crack the oh, windows yeah. a little bit. Yeah, you did. Remember yeah. banking them at night to keep... Yeah, you furnace. had a lever on your furnace where uh, you would yep. uh, do that. Yeah. And then you would just have the warm glow on the yep. coal until the next morning. Yep. Yeah. Stoke it up and put more coal in there. But that, that was so dirty. I, I found coal dirt from... Probably still some around someplace. Yeah. So, but it was good cold, good heat. Yeah. Anything else you can remember that you'd like to share? Yeah, probably after you leave, then I'll think of things. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. This concludes our interview with Ann Kangley, a longtime resident of uh, Thomas, West Virginia, and her experience living here.